Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my crazy life. Here is my oh-so-tiny little haul for the week. It was $14.47 at Aldi. I decided I'm going to do a little bit of a pantry challenge. I was inspired by Allison Pacino. Look her up if you haven't, or I'll try to link it below. She's got a keto channel, does a lot of cooking and good ideas. Um, so she inspired me. I'm going to do a pantry challenge this week and maybe next. I've got a lot of food in my house. But for the week, I did pick up one more of these. I'm going to start buying them as I go, um, just because they're good to have on hand for me. I'm going to make for lunches egg roll in a bowl, and I'm going to add mushrooms to mine. Breakfast is hard-boiled eggs and cheese with some berries. So I grabbed this white cheddar, which I really like. Uh, the blackberries this week were $1.29. And I, what I'm going to do is make a blackberry lemon no-bake cheesecake, and I'll show you how I do it. For that, I got two things of strawberries. These were 99 cents. I don't know if I'll be able to eat a whole one in the week, but what I can do is slice them up and freeze them. If I don't, I only need two bags of pork rinds. I picked up cream. So I got two things of cream that has strawberry juice on it. One dozen eggs. That was it. $14.47. Um, but I'll show you as I cook. We're going to make the raspberry, or I'm sorry, blackberry lemon cheesecake. We're going to make egg roll in a bowl. I'm going to boil eggs, cut cheese, and have all my stuff. Oh, and a cucumber and ranch for lunch and stuff this week. Uh, but I will bring you along. Hi guys, before we get started cooking, I just wanted to take a moment to show you something that I have been sent in the mail to try out, um, and it's this scale. The company's name is Okasau, and they contacted me and asked if I'd like to try this out. So I was like, sure, who doesn't need a good house scale? Um, yeah, so they sent it, it came in just a couple days. I ordered it on Amazon. I really like it. The top is glass. And the bottom just has these rubber grippers on it. It's a very basic scale. I believe it does like pounds, stones, um, because on the back here you can change the unit of measure. Takes two batteries. Very basic scale, but very pr reasonably priced. I want to say it was less than $15, um, but there will be a link down below. Yeah, and it's very accurate. I was testing it out all week between my scale and this scale, and they seem to both register about the same. So yeah, I wanted to share this with you, and I appreciate the company sending it to me to try it out. And if you need a new bathroom scale, why not test this one? It's really nice. All right, on to cooking and prep for the week. Bye. Okay, first step, we're gonna mash and macerate the blackberries. This is my Lakanto sweetener. I'm gonna put like four tablespoons because this is gonna sweeten up all of the cream, the cheesecake. And I found with this, four tablespoons is a good amount. And you can do it to, to your taste. You know, if you're gonna macerate, just put a couple tablespoons in, taste after you blend it all together. But this is also going to help this sugar dissolve. I just have this lemon juice because I don't have any lemons right now. So we're gonna put for this portion, two tablespoons of lemon juice. Obviously, if you have fresh, that's best, but I don't. So I'm gonna work with that. Because that's what I have. And then I'm just going to mash them a little bit. So what I want and um, is the, them to be all mushed up and kind of mixed up with the sweetness. And then after a while, once they kind of soften, I'm going to sieve them. Put them through a little fine mesh sieve just to get the seeds out. And again, if you don't have a sieve, don't worry about it. The seeds don't hurt you. I just don't want them stuck in my teeth at work. Since I'll probably take this to work as my like little afternoon pick me up with a piece, with a cup of coffee. Generally after lunch, I want something tasty. All right, let me get a fork out. So you don't want to lose all your berry stuff, but there are a lot of seeds in here that I don't want in mine. And then I'm just gonna give it a quick stir and let it just sit here and, and macerate. And let this all kind of break down and this, the acid from 
the lemon juice, the sugar, it'll just create a, you know, a delicious syrup. And then we're gonna blend that in with the cream cheese and whipped cream mixture to make a no-bake cheesecake. And I have my cream cheese coming to room temperature. So that'll be a little while before we do that. Next step, let's move you forward. Okay, next step, I've got the eggs on. I boil my eggs, everybody does it differently. I put them in cold water, cover them at least an inch, I turn them on high, I bring them to a boil, I let them boil for a few minutes, I turn them off and I let the water come down to room temperature. Then I shock them in, cold, not room temperature, but cool. Then I shock them in cold water, like ice water, and I don't, you generally have an issue peeling them. I mean, sometimes, but that works for me. Everybody, like I said, has their own little system. Um, this is just some plain pork. Smells good. That I got on sale that we are going to cook down. This is for the egg roll in a bowl. So I'm gonna cook it down and then I'm gonna add some spices and seasoning and cabbage and cook it all together. Once the, the meat is mostly cooked, I'll add the cabbage um, and the other ingredients, which I will show you when we get there. So that's it for right now. All right, the pork is almost cooked. So what I'm doing, I could cut up these mushrooms, but quite frankly, I like to look at them, make sure there's no extra dirt or yucky on them, and I just break them up, because these are really big. If they were the small button mushrooms, I really wouldn't care, but these are kind of big. So we're just gonna put the mushrooms in, and I'm gonna grab the cabbage here in a minute. Plus, I like a nice meaty bite of a mushroom. So we're gonna do that, and then I'm gonna add, before I put I guess it doesn't matter what order. I need to get the garlic and the ginger. And then I have coconut aminos instead of, not coconut aminos, um, liquid aminos. Coconut, amigo, coconut aminos have like nine grams of carbs. That is definitely not something that I'm using on a ketogenic diet. Um, liquid aminos have like a half a carb. The difference between a liquid amino and a soy sauce is there's no wheat in the liquid amino, so there's no um, gluten. For those of you who might be gluten free, and I think I have said this before, being keto, you're basically gluten free, but being gluten free does not make you keto, if that makes sense. Um, garlic in my bag. I'm just grabbing my bag of cabbage. So I bought this cabbage at my local farm stand the other day and I shredded it up so I could cook it down in this recipe. Now at this point you can flavor this however you like. I happen to like ginger, garlic, you can use powder, you can use fresh, whatever you like you can season this. It doesn't have to be Asian inspired either. It could be um, Italian. You could do like an Italian, it's called crack slaw, but you can flavor it any way you want. The base is a ground meat of some sort and cabbage. What you add to it is up to you. This is how I particularly like it. Some days I'm kind of craving a little Chinese, Asian flair this week, nothing of any importance. I just like it. I will also add a teaspoon or one packet of my sweetener. Um, because I believe there is a sugar in this when you make real egg rolls. They put sugar or sometimes a sweetened sauce and I'm not doing that. So I'll just add a little sweetness to it. And I don't know if I need a whole head of cabbage about it. So we're going to go with that. I'll make coleslaw out of the rest for later in the week for dinner. I took out of my freezer. I had cooked uh, last week or the week before, I think it was the week before, I grilled some chicken thighs and barbecued them and I have the rest in the freezer, or actually they're in the fridge right now. I took them out and I'm allowing them to thaw and I'll have them for dinner here probably tonight and I'll make up some coleslaw for that. So I definitely have plenty of food in the house that I did not need to grocery shop today. I've been spending a lot the last few weeks. 
Now this will all cook down. I'm gonna add some pepper. I won't add salt until the end. Um, the liquid aminos is, you know, has a fair amount of sodium in it. And if you wanna spice this up even more, you could add some chili powder or some red pepper flakes. Um, if you're doing an Asian and flared, Asian inspired. Yeah, so I'll probably add more pepper later, but I'm just gonna let all of this cook down together. I'll bring you back before I add the liquid aminos and I'll show you what it is that I bought. But right now I'm just cooking, really cooking down the cabbage, the mushrooms, the garlic and the ginger. Kind of letting it all blend together. Oh, and I like to put a little touch of vinegar in mine. I like that acidicness that it adds. And it also brings a little sweetness to it. No more than a tablespoon. It's just something behind the scenes. And when I finish it, it'll be with the Bragg's liquid amino and my sesame oil. This, I don't cook this, this is a finishing oil. It goes on at the end. This will get cooked in, but that's the liquid aminos that I use. And I ordered that on Amazon. It came, it was $11 and it was two of these. And I'm sure two of these. So two 16 ounce bottles was like $11. I just haven't been able to locate it at my store. Ah, I'll just put that back in there. This is why I'm forever moving my stove to clean it. I need to get a protector. I know they sell them, I just haven't bought it. It's like a silicone mat that lays there. All right, my eggs are coming up to a boil. They're not quite ready yet. And obviously this has a quite a ways to go. So it's ready. So I'll let the eggs do their thing for about five minutes. And then I'll get the, um, the bath ready. I only let them sit longest, you know, like 11 minutes, I think is what I do. So once it comes to a full boil, I turn it off, let it sit for 11 minutes. And then I douse it with ice and cold water. It just makes it easier to peel. And I'll have two hard boiled eggs, some cheese, and some strawberries for breakfast this week. I think that's a good, well-rounded, nutritious. I've been kind of craving the fruit. Um, and if you noticed, my pork wasn't quite all the way done. If you prefer, because it's gonna keep cooking, but you can also cook the, the meat, whatever meat you're cooking, turkey, pork, beef, whatever. Take it out of the pan, cook all your greens, your cabbage, and whatever vegetables you're cooking, and then at the end, well, you wanna cook your garlic and your ginger too, um, but then at the end, put it all back together, add your soy sauce, add your sesame oil, let it kinda of cook just for a minute, and that way you're not drying out your meat. I just go the other route, and I put everything in right before the pork is actually done. And this pork was very lean, so I added some olive oil, just to kinda of give it a little fat and somewhere to go. So that is where we're at with lunch preps and dinners and breakfasts and meals and food for the week. All right, my eggs are almost ready. I'll let them go a couple minutes and turn them off. All right, we'll be back. It is time to make some fun no-bake cheesecake. Oops. I think I have a cat fur in my cream. Hazards of having a cat in your house. Okay. So I'm going to whip up this cream. It's just heavy whipping cream that I get at Aldi. It's about a cup in here maybe. I like to use my whisk attachment, but you could totally use the beaters, which I'll switch over to when I do the cream cheese. But we're going to do this first, so give me a moment. All right, you wanna get this nice and stiff. However, right beyond stiff is butter. So you wanna be careful you don't get butter. Um, I mean, not that that's a bad thing, butter's great, but we want whip, or whipped cream, I'm sorry. So, there we go. Nice and stiff. So I'm gonna take this one off, hi buddy. Wellington's talking to me. He probably wants something. Who knows? He smells the cream, I'm sure. He loves cream. All right. So I have my whipped topping. 
it's whipped cream. In here, I've got a brick and a little bit of cream cheese, maybe like 10 ounces. It's a very fluid recipe. Um, I had a couple ounces in the fridge to use up, so I just softened it all. So this is about 10 ounces of cream cheese, I guess. And I put some vanilla in there. And then over here, I have my macerated blackberries. I didn't strain it. Um, you can, I didn't. So I'm gonna whip this up and then we're gonna add the blackberry. Okay, now the other reason you want this super soft is to blend, uh, make sure that the, the liquid, whatever fruit you're adding, or not fruit at all, but whatever you're adding to it, uh, blends in. Now, when I refrigerate this, it's going to get firm. So right now it's pretty soft, but the cream cheese will set up and the cream will also set up a little bit. Um, but what I'm gonna do, I hand fold this in just because I don't wanna try to deflate it all. And this is pretty soft. There's some lumpies in it. I could have, I guess, gone a little further, but it's just cream cheese. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's gonna firm up. All right, so we have that, and then we're gonna take the cream that we, oh wait, I wanna try that first. It's relatively sweet. I don't think I would want to add any more of the Lacanto, but I'm going to add a few drops of Stevia. This is just liquid Stevia. Just give it a little more brightness. And I do want to add some lemon extract because I'm not really catching the lemon. Now, I could do more lemon juice, but that's just going to thin it. So I have here, hi baby, some pure lemon, oops, some pure lemon extract. And I'm just going to put a, a touch in just a little bit to brighten it up. I really enjoy a lemon with my cream cheese when I do like a no bake or baking even when I make a cheesecake. Cheese Lori words. Okay. Mmm much better i got that brightness that i was looking for okay so what we're gonna do since my cream cheese is already pretty thin i'm gonna add all the whipped cream to it i know buddy and then i'm just gonna fold it in and this just takes a few minutes and then it goes in the refrigerator to set up so you want your it's gonna take several hours um, but you're going to want the cream cheese to firm back up again so you have more of a cheesecake consistency. So yeah, that is it. I'll just keep folding this in. and I don't worry about it all being blended in, but you want a decent amount. You know, you don't want to have just cream. I didn't sweeten the cream, but you can also sweeten that if you want more of a, you know, sweeter... Now, I'm the only one eating this, so it's okay that I lick the spoon and stick it back in. If I was sharing with somebody else, I wouldn't worry about it. Or I would worry about it, but I'm not because it's just me. All right. So, I'm going to taste it real quick. Mmm. That's delicious. Not overly sweet. Nice and bright. You get that blackberry and the cream cheese flavor. Um, I might add just a touch more lemon. At this stage, because I didn't, I'm not getting the lemon again, the cream kind of buried that lemon flavor. And again, you can add zest to this. You can add anything you want. I'm just going to add a little more lemon extract to mine, just for that brightness. Like I said, I like that bite with the heavy cream and the cream cheese. That little bit of citrusy bite from the lemon is delicious with this. But that is my no-bake blackberry cheesecake lemon blackberry cheesecake i suppose mm. refrigerate it for a couple hours overnight will be better and then you can portion it out i'm going to portion out a little bit of it so i can show you how i pack my lunch and then put the rest in the fridge so we will sh we will return all righty it took about two hours 
give or take. I sat down for a little bit and watched some TV to rest, but let things cool. But here is my lunch for the week. So in here, I only have one of this size Tupperware container. So I have two hard boiled eggs, some cheese, and some strawberries. And then every night I'll just rinse this out and restock it. And I'll show you that where I store those. Here we go. So that's a nice little breakfast container into the lunch box. I have two Tupperwares up here, salt and pepper. Here are my eggs. There's a cut up cheese and there's the strawberries. And in a couple days I'll freeze some because there's no way I'm eating all of that. Um, here I have five servings of the egg roll in a bowl. So that'll go in here. To go with my lunch, I have some zucchini. And then these are from the Dollar Tree. They're just little storage containers and I put a little bit of ranch to have with the zucchini. And then this is the um, cheesecake mixture. I have, you know, about what, a quarter of a cup, three quarters of a, well, this is a half a cup serving. So about a quarter of a cup um, for dessert. So I just stick that in here. The rest of this will go into the refrigerator. And then when I'm ready to come home at night, I will clean everything out, repack my lunch, and be ready for the next day. So I hope that's helpful for everybody, and you have a good one. Bye!